Oh, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for the fantastic Go Wild, Go Crazy for Mr. Sean Locke, ladies and gentlemen! Thank you! Whoa! Wow! Wow, he got you going, didn't he? That was great. Nice to come out, a bit of energy, a bit of atmosphere in the room. It's very exciting, yeah. Oh, it's all gone. <laughs> no, it's, it's, maybe I look shocked, you know. I'm not saying I don't normally get that kind of response when I come out. But, you know, when you play in, play in this country, you can get some weird rooms. You know, you can come out on stage, people just go... Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, make us laugh if you feel like it. When I'm like, yeah. As British people, we're quite negative, aren't we? We're quite downbeat bunch, you know, you never know what you're going to get. We are quite sort of negative people, aren't we? <laughs> oh, tricky one down there. No. <laughs> no, we are quite negative sort of people. You say you're going to do anything, got any big plans, big ideas in life, people just knock you for it, don't you? Say anything, say like, uh, I'm going swimming. Someone go, don't want to do that. No. <laughs> It'll be shut. <laughs> Lose your towel, get a Veruca. <laughs> And we've always got that disappointed look on our face, haven't we? You know, that sort of downturned mouth. But it's not, it's actually, we don't even go to the extreme of disappointment. It's like we're disappointed about something we weren't that excited about in the first place. <laughs> Dave's party's been cancelled. Yeah, it would have been shit anyway. <laughs> like if British people landed on the moon, we wouldn't put a flag up, but a little sign up saying, caution, uneven surface. <laughs> Like in China, don't they? in China, they have fortune cookies, lovely little biscuits, as a little message for you about your future. Equivalent you have in this country would be a pie with a gas bill in it, wouldn't it? <laughs> hmm, 67 quid. <laughs> but it's not like that here tonight. There's a, I feel there's a really a special atmosphere in here tonight, really special. It's like a cup final, isn't it? Like a cup final. Yeah. It's not, is it? No, no, no. It's getting carried away there. Well, it's like a cup final about five hours before kickoff. Yeah. It's a couple of fat blokes with a flask, all excited. <laughs> Can't believe we're here. I thought we were shit. In fact, you wouldn't want the atmosphere to be like a cup final, would you? Because we always say cup finals, so they're very tense. You cut the tension with a knife. So I thought it's a really bad idea. A lot of tense people don't get a knife out. <laughs> <laughs> You'll spoil the atmosphere. Whatever that is. You know, people are always talking about atmospheres. I don't understand it. Really. Like pubs advertise them, don't they? they get a fine selection of ales, good food, and a green atmosphere. Like it's a permanent thing. <laughs> you just walk in and feel slightly magical. Oh, <laughs> this place is amazing. <laughs> oh, it's like a cross between Narnia and Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> it's only half past six as well. What's it like when everyone else turns up? <laughs> and they put the lights on. <laughs> so I went to a pub the other day which advertised a great atmosphere, and it did have a great atmosphere. So I got my knife out. <laughs> oh, I spoiled it. <laughs> but the, I think the best atmosphere you get in the world has to be on top of the pops. The atmosphere on that show is incredible, isn't it? Because they love everything, don't they, on top of the pops? You never see any bands getting booed off, do you? <laughs> Everything, you know, Bob the Builder. Hey! Brilliant, hey, Bob the Builder. And now, Marilyn Manson. Hey! It's Marilyn Manson! What, you like Bob the Builder and Marilyn Manson? <laughs> I'd like to see your bedroom. Hey. <laughs> A weird teenager. Yeah, I don't know where they get them from, I don't know, because they're not like the rest of us. I don't know where they... What my theory is the BBC producers, they go to restaurants and they wait for a plate to get smashed. And if anyone goes, hey, do you want to come on top of the pops? <laughs> You're perfect. <laughs> bit of a character. <laughs> you know those people, they go, oh, he's a bit of a character, my mate. You know what I mean? Oh, he's a right lad. Oh, he's a character. You love him. <laughs> they can't walk past a hat without trying it on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my nutter. Oh, yeah. <coughs> uh, and and it's, there's something sort of grimly British as well, isn't it? About cheering a broken plate. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, someone's fucked up. Hey! <sighs> Wasn't me. <laughs> Because they don't do that in the rest of the world, you know, in other countries, they're far more mature about it. 
plate smashed in France, they don't tell you no, they just carry on chatting in French. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really let my imagination run wild there, have I? <laughs> but, well, Italy, they're very good humoured. They're good humoured. They have a laugh about it. Go, hey, Luigi. Hey. Towels all the waiter's hair. Hey. He's not a dwarf. He's picking up the plate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, let's just make, clear that up. Yeah. I'll give you a bit, bit of advice. Don't do that to the dwarf. You know? <laughs> You'll have more than the broken plate on your hands. That's what I'm saying. A lot stronger than they look. And I was in a restaurant in Germany, plate was smashed, waiter was taken outside and shot! <laughs> it was incredible. Mind you, I should point out, it did make the front pages of all the newspapers, so... I don't think that was the normal response. It's a tense night, a lot of knives in there. And in Greece, they, in the Greek restaurants, you go to a Greek restaurant, they smash all the plates at the end of the meal. Anyway, don't they? Because I don't know if you ever tried to use Greek washing up liquid, but... Oh, it's rubbish, it is. <laughs> Basically, it's hummus. That's what they use, yeah. Because <laughs> they don't eat it. They don't eat it. They can't believe we eat it. You know? <laughs> Mostly they use it for grouting. <laughs> Making speed bumps, stuff like that. <laughs> don't worry, that's the last of the plate smashing round the world jokes. I don't, I'm not do a whole theme show in an hour's time. I'll be going, and in Albania, what they do? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, what do they do? Something, I bet, something quirky, is it? <laughs> They always wanted to do a show about Beethoven, actually, you know, the composer of Beethoven. Not the dog, the Labrador. Yeah. Actually, St. Bernard, wasn't he? But it's close enough, isn't it? Nobody picked me up. Doesn't matter, does it? But no, Beethoven, the composer. I don't know if you know, a lot of people know about Beethoven. He went deaf, he was mad, great composer. What a lot of people don't know is that he couldn't write music. You know, he couldn't write music in the normal time, you know, with notes. He used to write it out in words. Yeah, he used to have to write. Duh, na, na. No. No, number two R's. Uh, da, na, na, diddly, diddly, na, 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 na. And he finally went mad because he could never spell the noise an oboe makes. You know. <laughs> You don't get punchlines like that every day, do you? <laughs> anyway, lovely to be here in Warwick. Nice to be here in Warwick. I say that, actually, I say that. I, I did have terrible trouble getting here tonight. Cause, you know, I learned a lot of comics say that, but I genuinely did have a lot of trouble getting here tonight. It's quite traumatic, actually, when I think about it. Started out, unhappy childhood. Um, <laughs> 16 years, no lager. How did I do it? <laughs> But another problem I had on me Rocky Road here tonight was when I left school, I went to see my careers officer. He said, what do you want to be? I said, well, I quite like to be careers officer. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm really good at letting people down. Um, <laughs> making their dreams seem like a handful of dust. <laughs> <laughs> but he said, forget it, you haven't got the maths. <laughs> he was good. <laughs> Finish you off like that. And another problem I've got at the moment, also another little confession I've got to make, I suppose, is I'm also in therapy at the moment. Thanks. Um, I don't need it, obviously. Just got these psychiatric gift vouchers for Christmas. <laughs> the whole family chipped in. I was very disappointed. I wanted a crossbow. <sighs> And I've had a busy week, very busy week this week. Monday, I invented a pill to cure obesity. Yeah. It's that big, made of cork. <laughs> Tuesday was weird, Tuesday was weird. I had my first ever game of crazy golf. And it's a bit of a disappointment, really, because it didn't quite provide the mayhem I was expecting. <laughs> I thought I'd hit the ball and the world would just go mental. <laughs> There'd be marzipan albatrosses flying around. Eh? <laughs> Conquistadors on space hoppers. Oh, ah! It's going to be brilliant. In the end, I was just knocking it up and around this windmill for about half an hour. Get up the fucking... This is crazy. It's just fucking irritating, this is. <laughs> yeah. 
Wednesday, Wednesday was one of those quiet days. You know those days you've got nothing on, nothing to do, nowhere to go. Just it was, oh, just you know those days you're just bored out of your mind. I was, I was so bored, right? I couldn't even bother to move my head. That's how bored I was. <laughs> what I normally do in those situations is I put my Wallace and Gromit tie on and I just go out, start a few arguments. Because <laughs> when you're wearing novelty neckwear, people don't expect trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they go, God, what's the matter with you? I thought you'd be a nice bloke. <laughs> I go to museums, start touching stuff. <laughs> they hate that, don't they, museums? Touch all the exhibits. <laughs> Oh, 5,000 year old pot. Wonder what that feels like. Mm. Talcum powder. All right. <laughs> I was in the Tower of London right, and I was touching this suit of armour. And this bloke went, Don't touch that! I said, What do you mean? It's armour. <laughs> That's the minimum you expect from it, mate. <laughs> you can touch the bloody stuff. He said, I said, You little job's worth put a uniform on, you turn a little Hitler. What's the matter with you? He said, Oh, God, bloody hell, you're a bit strong. Thought you'd be a nice bloke, you've got a Wallace and Gromit tie on. <laughs> I said, if you look closer, you'll see that Gromit's eyes have been unstitched. <laughs> I'm a wrong un. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, Thursday, a weird thing happened on Thursday. I went to u urinal, went to urinal for a piss, obviously. Yeah. There's no other reason to be there, is there? <laughs> Unless you're interested in Victorian plumbing, I suppose. And, uh, <laughs> This bloke stood next to me, right, and pissed in my eye. <laughs> and I said, excuse me. Because I stick up for myself, you know. And he said, I'm terribly sorry, he said, I'm terribly sorry, he said, but I've got a lot of piercings in my penis, he said. And I had one taken out recently. And if I don't put my finger over the hole in the top, <laughs> urine shoots out the side. So I thought, fair enough, made sense to me. You know. <laughs> And I had a look, and I, it, it was, it's right, I've never seen so much metal in all my life. Right? He had all these little piercings of Prince Albert, he had a couple of little bells hanging there, on that bit between the thing and the front and the back. And the, uh, all the way down the inside of his legs, had lovely horse brasses. You know? <laughs> like you get around a pub fireplace. He was spectacular. He was really and Friday, Friday, a big argument with my wife, massive argument with my wife. I said to her, I said, Chow pat lao! Fun chow lao pat nap fat hoi! Can chow bae o tum wa tu hoi! Go let me hey! Oh, what's she like? I don't know. <laughs> I've told her before, don't put diesel in the escort. Black pump bad. Use green pump. <laughs> I got the catalogue out, I said, in here, says you clever, not stupid. <laughs> I don't know why I get so stressed. I mean, she has to siphon it out. It's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it all right if I do that, doesn't it? Because <laughs> you do get stressed, don't you? Like the other day, I was killing this pig with a hammer. <laughs> I thought to myself, I need a holiday. <laughs> He's done nothing wrong, why punish him? Hmm? Stress gets you, doesn't it? Stress. Because a mate of mine, what he does when, when he's stressed, what he does to relax is he listens to whale song. And I thought, that can't be relaxing, can it? Whales, you know? They've got, they got to be the least relaxed animals on the planet, haven't they? For starters, they're endangered. Is that relaxing? There's only ten of you left. Hmm? <laughs> As long as I'm one of them. <laughs> if I'm feeling a bit horny, I'll sellotape a couple of dolphins together. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> but not only are they endangered, they're the biggest animals on the planet, whales, aren't they? They're enormous. Me doing that doesn't quite get across how, <laughs> how big they are. But they eat the smallest, don't they? They eat krill and plankton, tiny little creatures. Imagine that, you're a great big animal, starving hungry, you never get a good bite of anything. You never get a good, oh, oh, that was bloody lovely, that was, oh, oh. You know, all day long just shoving tiny bits of food in the side of your mouth. I like to think of it as Jeff Capes living on hundreds and thousands. <laughs> He'd be livid, wouldn't he? I'm starving, Ugh. 
and he'd be wandering around looking for whatever the individual of hundreds and thousands is. I don't, I don't know what you call them when you've only got one. I don't know. <laughs> you call it, what, what? You call it, you wouldn't call it hundreds and thousands. That's too long for something that little, isn't it? It's, you call it a one, I don't know. Because they can't have always had hundreds and thousands of them, can they? Surely, in the early days... <laughs> They must have made a few, see what they were like. <laughs> then made a few more. I mean, that's not good business sense, is it? You've got a new product. You don't just make hundreds and thousands of them. <laughs> we're going to be rich! <laughs> yeah, you make a few, make a few more. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I think that's all you can really do on hundreds and thousands, you know, really. <laughs> I've tried to extend that routine, but... I've looked at them, stared at them. How, you know, this, that's all you're going to get out of them. I think, you know? <laughs> Actually, well, I did find out recently that in, in America they don't call them hundreds and thousands; they call them sprinkles. Yeah, found that out at a gig. That was a tough night, I tell you. <laughs> she. This guy in the front row going hundreds and thousands. What? Hundreds and thousands. What? I said, no, no, it's not hundreds and thousands of anything. They're called hundreds and thousands. They're a cake decoration. He said, we don't call them that, we call them sprinkles. So I said, all right, it's like Jeff Capes living on sprinkles. I thought I'd get him the second time. He went, who the hell's Jeff Capes? I said, he's a massive bloke. I said, massive bloke. I said, you know, loves his grub. Strongest man in the world, three years running. He said, we don't call him that, we call him Luther Van Dross. So I said, all right, it's like Luther Van Dross living off sprinkles. But by that point, they'd forgotten about the whales. And they were just going, why the hell would Luther Vandross eat sprinkles? <laughs> He's a millionaire. He could eat steak every day. He could have an escalator of steak going straight into his mouth. What, are you saying he's too dumb to go and find his own food? He's got to go eat little bits of cakes. Are you racist? Is that your problem, buddy? <laughs> so I just did a couple of knob gags and got off. You know. <laughs> well, I would have done if I knew what a knob was. <laughs> And he was going, why did you do that to your doorknob? What's the matter with you? What the heck's Marmite? What's that shit? <laughs> yeah, so true. I didn't really blend in too easily into life in America. I didn't really fit in very well. You know, I had a lot, a lot of problems over there. I, got, I used to get really annoyed by, by the way they kept going about how great America was. Everyone used to tell you how great America was, a great country, fantastic, amazing country. And I thought, well, yeah, the two best things about it are the landscape and the climate. And uh, you haven't really had a lot to do with that, really, have you? <laughs> you? can't really take the credit for it, can you? I did it like that as well, quite annoying. Right? <laughs> you haven't really had a lot to do with it. <laughs> you know, they tend to be working in the opposite direction, actually, don't they? I mean, you can drive through beautiful mountains, wonderful deserts, get to a town. What have they got? Giant neon prawn. Ooh. <laughs> Just what the horizon lacked, I felt. <laughs> I went to one town, right? They got the world's biggest thermometer. Right? It's about an 80 foot high thermometer. And I got into an argument there when I pointed out the world's second biggest thermometer was that big. <laughs> <laughs> and there was really no need to build one that high. That high, you know, one by miles. <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't, didn't like it at all. I mean, I, I even had trouble having a drink there, getting a drink there. I was in a, a bar in New York, and I'd had a couple of beers beforehand, you know, fair enough. I went to the bar, said, I'd like a drink. He said, I can't serve you drunk. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> hey, I'm a bit of a character. Took my sombrero off a few times. <laughs> hey. I said, I didn't come here for the stools, mate. No, no, no. <laughs> Well, the hilarious pictures of dogs playing snooker. No, no, no. I said, I've heard Eye of the Tiger many times. Yes. <laughs> I said, I came here to get pissed. He said, well, we don't like having drunks in our bar. So I said, well, don't serve booze then. <laughs> you know, that's like saying you don't like wasps and smearing marmalade on your bollocks, isn't it, really? <laughs> vroom, vroom. Bloody things. Vroom. Get him with him. Oh, Jesus. This is, this is you just get off me. Well, don't put marmalade on your bollocks, mate. I like it. <laughs> they don't do that in the restaurants. They say, sorry, sir, you can't have the chicken. You're too fat. <laughs> Have a 
salad, suck on a napkin or something. <laughs> Big hog. Uh, uh, uh. Or in the shop. Sorry, madam, you can't buy this dress. You're a tart. <laughs> There's a mirror there. Don't make me use it. <laughs> or in the psychiatrist. I'm sorry, sir, I can't treat you. You're a fucking nutter, aren't you? <laughs> Look at you. Your eyes are going around your head. Kill your family in a week. Get out of here. <laughs> Because however you slag off this country, if you want to get pissed, you can. Don't you? We cater for people who want to get arsehole very quickly in this country. I think the main example of that is Special Brew. The other day I had one can of it, started threatening a whole shopping centre. Yeah. For some reason I was particularly angry with the roof. It's amazing that drink, isn't it? As far as I can see, the only special thing about it is a can of it's never been drunk indoors. But, you know. <laughs> Or pay for with a five pound note. <laughs> or a pound coin, actually. You know, usually usually a two peas wrapped up in a hanky. <laughs> but it's an amazing product, because no, there's no product that's been more clearly targeted at a particular market, is there? They've really sat down and had to think, who do we want to sell this stuff to, don't they? One of the Carlsberg directors sat down one day and said, well, we're doing quite well. We're not really getting our fair share of the tramp drinks market. <laughs> Let's quadruple the strength of the beer. <laughs> yeah. Little tigers will lap it up. A special promotion, six cans, free blanket, stuff like that. You know? <laughs> Little trolley for your possessions. <laughs> have, I, have I gone too real then? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's usually actually this point in my act, in about half an hour, you know, something like that. I always think to myself, wish I had a bit of talent. Yeah. <laughs> be nice for everybody, wouldn't it? You know, if I could sing, dance, do a bit of magic, a couple of impressions. <laughs> Although that was somebody, that was Eric Giblin, but you don't know him. Um, <laughs> every now and again, he just goes, <laughs> you know, break it up a bit, you know, instead of yaggity, 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 yak. But unfortunately, I can't. And uh, actually, I wish I hadn't brought it up now. But that's what I quite admire about those old northern club comics, those old club comics, because they do a very clever thing, those old comics, don't they? Because what they do is they tell a filthy, dirty joke, don't they? then they sing a lovely song <laughs> you know, to make everything better again. <laughs> you know, you're all soiled and dirty with the joke. Like, Ugh, oh. But then they cleanse you with music. <laughs> like Bernard Manning who gets the punchline of one of his jokes. I walked in, and she was bent over, stark naked, tying up one of her shoelaces. I said, hey, love, I didn't recognise you without your teeth in. <laughs> Feelings. <laughs> Feelings I can't forget. These feelings of love. <sighs> Here we go. Here we go. Mr. Whippy having a shit. <laughs> to the moon and let me play amongst the stars let me see what life is like on Jupiter and Mars how'd you stop a dog humping your leg pick him up suck his cock <laughs> soft and tanned and young and lovely the girl from Ipanema who was walking. I think you need more songs to get over that one, don't you? <laughs> like a super trooper, dreams are gonna find you. Like I always knew. Super pa, true pa, pa super pa. I'd like to see Bernard do that. <laughs> Actually, in my throat, it's, sometimes I think to myself, you know, that, those Bernard and Man impressions, whew, they get your throat. Sometimes I don't know whether to give up smoking or Bernard Manning impressions. I don't, I don't know which one would be more difficult. <clears throat> Best bit of me act. Um, you're supposed to go, no, it isn't, Sean. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. That actually meant something to me. Um, but uh, no, it's funny, at least with Bernard Manning impressions, people don't say to you, oh, you shouldn't do them. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, they're bad for you, they are. They're, oh. <laughs> Those Bernard Manning impressions, and they, oh, they can talk your face, you look really ugly. Because yeah. every time I, like, I pick up a cigarette, people go, I oh, don't do that, it'll kill you. I think, oh, thanks, that's ruined my night. <laughs> yes. 
And I think about it, when, actually, when I think about it, there's a, there's a lot more dangerous things I've got to give up before I go out smoking, like obviously swimming in shark infested waters. That's, <laughs> it's not good, is it? It's not very sensible, is it? Or threatening the army. Why do I do it? <laughs> Drinking from canals. I must be mad. <laughs> You know what it's like? You're thirsty, near a canal. Mm. <laughs> Actually, right, it's quite a big stage, this. I always feel... So, uh, insignificant is probably the wrong word. Um, <laughs> too thin. Maybe that's another way of putting it. I think, you know, sometimes it's nice to be a big sort of fat comic. You know, you just fill up the stage more, wouldn't you? But I can't... I'm, you know that people say that when they, put, when they eat a lot, they put weight on this. Oh, it goes on my hips or I get on my belly. I get it on my tongue. And... <laughs> It's no good for this job. I've got a really fat tongue if I eat a lot. I've got to like that. And, it's not, and people, people think I'm taking the piss out of me ill. And that, that's not good for starters, is it? You know, that's not going to win you over a cloud, is it? is it? So that's why I don't tend to eat too much, really. I said, stay away on a very dodgy territory there, wasn't I? Just for a second, step back. <laughs> No, no, I'm not. I don't, I don't eat too much. I, don't eat, I particularly don't eat junk food. I'm very sensible. I don't eat junk food. Hardly ever. I, never, I particularly don't ever eat Kentucky Fried Chicken. I refuse to go anywhere near them. Because I just think there's something fundamentally wrong about serving your food in a bucket. You know, just... <laughs> it shows a sincere, really serious amount of lack of respect for their customers. <laughs> Here's your dinner in this bucket here. <laughs> Pathetic that useless waste of space. Go on, nibble away in that bucket. <laughs> yeah, hog. What are you? Yeah, yeah, bucket. Yeah, yeah. Imagine you're at someone's house for dinner. Someone invited you around the house for dinner. <laughs> they said, where's the dinner? Well, we just all smeared it over the skirting boards. You thought you might, you might want to lick it off. <laughs> I, don't, I don't go to McDonald's either. I never go to McDonald's. The only time I ever go to McDonald's is when they do those weird Disney link-ups. You know, they do the weird... They do the cross vert They do a thing. Disney bring a film out. They talk to McDonald's. We've got a film come out. They go, we'll do a sort of burger-type experience film. I don't know what it is. I don't know how you describe it. They somehow join a burger and a film together to create a multimedia catering experience. Um... <laughs> I don't know, I don't think there's been a word to describe it yet, but like the, the one I particularly remember was the Hero Burger. They created, there, was a, there was a Hercules film, big cartoon, Hercules film, and they created a burger. They created this burger that managed to conjure up all the myths and legends of ancient Greece. <laughs> and the battles between the mortals and the gods and the 12 feats of Hercules by just putting a bit of bacon in a burger like that. <laughs> That's a genius, you know, because I thought ancient Greece, a bit of hummus, something like that. <laughs> but obviously, they didn't eat it. Well, they knew that, you know. I remember, particularly one I remember was the Pocahontas burger. They had a Pocahontas film, they created a Pocahontas... They created this burger, right? And uh, it was basically it had, like a couple of extra gherkins and some barbecue sauce to represent the great Cherokee nation. <laughs> <laughs> the proud tribe used to roam the plains with a couple of gherkins and some barbecue sauce. <laughs> Amazing people, the Cherokee, actually, I don't know if you know this, but they had no word in their language for property or ownership or possession. They didn't believe you could own particularly land. They didn't believe you could own land, so how could you ever have a word to describe it? Very far-sighted, visionary people. Mind you, they did have a word for making a little hat out of your testicles, so... Uh, <laughs> they weren't that nice, you know what I mean? <laughs> they could turn. <laughs> I like to think it was really hard hippies. You know? <laughs> And occasionally, I do occasionally go in kebab shops, not to eat one, I wouldn't eat one, I just go in there to see what new shade of grey the kebab roll has turned to. You know? <laughs> that donor thing, that there, because you get some amazing colours and textures, don't you? <laughs> yeah. I, love, I love the way they, they turn through the night. It's like a lighthouse for drunks, isn't it? That? <laughs> no. No. I, was, I was in one the other day, I was in one the other day, and the owner was smearing calamine lotion over it. Because it had a rash. <laughs> and he was clipping its toenails as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so... You don't know how pleased I am with that. Oh. <laughs> that laugh's good, but sometimes... Oh, it's even better. Because you know they're alive, those things, don't you? You know that. You know they're alive. Yeah. That's why they put them on a spike. Stop them wriggling out the shop. <laughs> they're like big, fat, brown worms, eh? They always put the face on the bottom so you can't see its expression when it's being... 
ها You ever been outside a kebab shop? Felt something wet snuffling at your leg like that. <laughs> there it goes. Off they go down the drains, start multiplying. <laughs> Take over the world. Got carried away, didn't I? Because <laughs> that's the, the most difficult thing about this job is uh, is linking all the stuff together, joining all the materials together. You know, you can write the jokes, but actually joining it together, make it something like some seamless, like you've got an act, basically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and as you've gathered, I have more difficulty than most people doing that. I do have a lot of difficulty. Because I, I find it very hard. I mean, you can't just say something like, hmm, um, and here's another thing I say in my act. <laughs> Seems cheap, doesn't it? Seems, lacks class, that, doesn't it? I thought of saying something like, uh, I have a lot of requests and emails asking me to talk about Senegal. <laughs> So for all you people who contacted me, I don't think about Senegal, but uh, I didn't see that for wrong time. Anyway, talking to Senegal. <laughs> yeah. I tricked you, didn't I? Uh, no, genuinely, talking to Senegal, I am that clumsy. I've, I've <laughs> you can't believe the sheer brass neck of the man. <laughs> Now, I found out this fact about Senegal. Uh, do you know that in Senegal, they've got no word for tangerine? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine living there. <laughs> Imagine that. You just get the, get the market and go, can I have four of them, please? <laughs> what are they called? You don't know. Well, it's weird, isn't it? Uh, you just sell them, you don't know what they are. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's one of those things. It's not necessarily funny, but it's not boring either, is it? <laughs> it's in that strange grey area. You know? so sometimes things aren't hilarious, but they're worth mentioning. <laughs> You know, you don't, you don't laugh your head off, but you also don't walk off with a pissed off look on your face, either. Don't you? Waste my time. You do the, what you do is normally... The response that you normally give when someone says something like that is you do this, you go... I don't know what you call that. I don't know what that is called. That. It's not laughing, is it? It's not crying. I don't know what it is. It's... Like, I'll give an example. The other day I was watching a Tarzan film, and just at the point where Tarzan was about to beat his chest, my brother in law fell down the stairs. <laughs> Made a very similar noise to the one Tarzan was going to make. <laughs> and the other day I was, I was brushing my teeth, and I nearly finished. I realised I hadn't had breakfast. <laughs> Now that's just boring, isn't it? That one. That's is... <laughs> very dull. Now, see, this is this is it, it's it's not necessarily hilarious, but it's quite interesting. So I found out the other day. It's a very weird experience. I found out I've got a nickname. They've been calling me Sean Two Nans. Yeah, Sean Two Nans, because both my nans are still alive. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think it was the most interesting thing about me. <laughs> I thought they might mention my powerful throw, something like that. Yeah. My thick, lustrous hair. <laughs> oh, expected a bigger laugh. Um, <laughs> no, they call me short. Well, they were calling me that until a couple of weeks ago, but. Uh, <sighs> you get on stage, you just do the job, don't you? And struggle through. Actually, they probably carry on. You know, once you've got a nickname, it sticks. You've got it for life, haven't you? You never get rid of a nickname. There's a guy at our school, his, his, his whole school day was ruined, you know, because he got a nickname and that was it. It was stuck, stuck with him. Because he, he wasn't handy. His nickname was Diarrhea Dave. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't because he had an accident in class. He was just the only person in the school who could spell it. <laughs> Kids can be very cruel, can't they? Get him in a headlock, powerless. Um, <laughs> But it's quite interesting how Nana B died. That's what we called her. We called them Nana A, Nana B. This is the way we differentiated. I suppose we should have used their names. It's too late now. Um, <laughs> because Nana B, what happened was she had one of those walk-in baths. You know, when old people have trouble getting in the bath. She had a walk-in little door in her bath. And she got in her bath, shut the door, had her bath. Right? When his bath was finished, right, she couldn't get the door open. It was stuck. Obviously, the, I know, the heat expanded, whatever. And she had a problem, you know. She was there on her own in the flat. It was a bank holiday. The chances of a visit were slim. 
And, uh, you know, she's in a bit of a, bit of a pickle, she would have called it, actually. That would have been her language. She'd have probably said, oh, my giddy aunt at some point as well. <laughs> and, uh, you know, after a couple of hours, she's, she's cold, she's tired, naked. You know, it's not a pretty image. <laughs> she hatches a plan to escape. And what she decides to do is run the bath till the water starts overflowing from the bath. And the idea is to fill the flat up with water <laughs> to the same level as the bath. And then she can just float over the top. <laughs> And it worked. She did it. It worked. But then she couldn't turn the taps off. They were stuck. You know, it was one of those days. You, know? <laughs> you get those days, you go, oh, if anything else happens. And she, she had a problem because the whole flat's filling up with water now. And so she's, just, she's got to get out. So she starts swimming down the corridor, wishing she had a cat. Because then she'd have a cat flat and the water would go out. Wouldn't it? <laughs> Thought this through. Oh, yes. <laughs> And the water level's rising all the time, and she's seeing parts of the flat she hasn't seen for years. And I think initially she was shocked by the dust. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> but things were getting critical. She had about six inches of room left, you know, six inches of room left. And her whole life flashed before her eyes. It didn't take long, because her memory was going. And in a couple of seconds, she was up to the day before yesterday. When she realised at no point in her life had she ever learned to swim. And the only thing that was keeping her afloat was her plastic hips. <laughs> Which is strangely what got her into this mess in the first place. And I just hope in her final seconds that the irony of that wasn't lost on her. <laughs> <laughs> and she was able to go, A lot of you are looking at me saying, surely you should be more emotionally disturbed by those <laughs> events. But, you know, everyone at the funeral agreed. Everyone said, you know, she was 80, she'd had a good innings. Everyone said that. Well, apart from a few 79-year-olds who... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Fuck, it's a fiddle, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Going skiing next week? Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Actually, we had a lot of bad news in my family recently. Found out the other day, my nephew suffers from dyslexia. Yeah. It took a long time to diagnose it, though, because he's really stupid as well. <laughs> That's not fair, both of them, is it? You know, you think it's one or the other. Oh. Yeah. Actually, we were, we were discussing earlier, actually, we were trying to have a chat earlier, who do you think the most stupid person in the world is? If you had to pick one person who is the most stupid person in the world, who would you pick? And we worked out who it is. It's, it's Michael Flatley. He's the dumbest man in the world, right? And the reason I say this is, I don't know if you know, he's had his legs insured for $10 million. Yeah. But if he gets smacked around the head with a cricket bat, he doesn't get a penny. <laughs> and that's going to affect your dancing, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Can I have my 10 million? <laughs> no, your legs are fine. <laughs> I did a Yorkshire Michael Flatley then, I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it, do it at once, can I? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> actually, another, the next thing I'm going to tell you is, is neither funny nor interesting, it's actually quite boring, and a lot of people say, you know, if they were giving me advice, I'd don't do it. But uh, I'm going to tell you this, because it's actually quite an interesting bit of information as well. What, what I'm going to say to you is never ever, if you're going to book a flight, you're going to fly anywhere in this country, do, ne do not ever, ever fly with British they're a useless airline, they're completely incompetent, they don't know what they're doing, they shouldn't be allowed to operate, don't ever, ever use them. And I'm not just going to leave it there and do some material about the Hutton Inquiry, you know. <laughs> you know. No. I'm going to explain. What happened was I, I booked a flight with them recently and I got to the airport, you know, two hours before takeoff, plenty of time to check in, wander around the airport, you know, look at strange liqueurs, I like doing that. <laughs> or just circle the knicker box for half an hour. <laughs> Ooh, what you bought? <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't to be because what British had done is they'd sold 200 tickets for a flight which only had 120 seats when I got to the check-in they said sorry Mr Locke you won't be able to go on this flight we're going to put you on the next flight we've oversold the flight so we have to put you on the next flight we've sold too many tickets you're going to have to go on the next flight and what I said and these are my exact words what I said was what the fuck <laughs> do you think you're fucking doing selling my fucking ticket you fucking wanker. <laughs> Those are my exact words. And he said to me, there's no need to swear. 
And I said, no, mate, you're wrong. I said, there is a need to swear. I said, in fact, it's situations like this that swearing was fucking invented for. <laughs> So this is why we've got swear words, mate. The word fuck was created for exactly this moment. Listen to it. Fuck! I'm not going on my fucking flight! <laughs> you fucked up my fucking day! <laughs> yes, no, there is a need to swear. I said, probably, probably in Japan there's no need to swear. There's probably no need to swear in Japan, you know, because everything works. Everyone does their job, you know. In, they, in Japan they don't need words like shit, bollocks, prick, toss a cunt, wanker arse. They don't need words like that. <laughs> Because in Japan, you buy a ticket, you go to the airport, you get on a plane! <laughs> Yippee! <laughs> in fact, their language develops in a completely different direction. They've got over a hundred different words for early. <laughs> I said, in this country, we've got one. Early! <laughs> and the last time you heard that, mate, you were shagging your wife. <laughs> Oh, yes, that felt good, I can tell you. <laughs> and he said to me, he said, you're only saying that because I'm black. <laughs> I said, that's not true. Because he wasn't. No, he wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> I said, what? What? Yeah. I reckon he must have heard a black guy use it and thought, that's a good line, I'm using it. <laughs> Puts people right on the back foot, that does. I thought, what am I supposed to say instead? What am I supposed to say instead? Say, damn? Damn, blast, fiddlesticks, <laughs> shiver my timbers. <laughs> I won't be going, gadzooks, what's going on here? <laughs> flip, oh, for flip's sake, I'm not going on my flipping flight. This is really flipping everything, flipped everything, flipped up. I'm really flipped off about it. I can't flipping believe it. It's flipping, always flipping over to me. <laughs> what are flipping, what are flipping people think you're flipping doing? When have you ever seen anyone, midnight, railway station, pissed, banging a vending machine, going, this flipping thing is flipped! <laughs> it's flipping, flip, the flipping thing! I put 50p in it, flipping, for God's sake, flipping chocolate! <laughs> I'll get some flipping chocolate and flipping thing! <laughs> and some bloke goes, oi, pack that in! Flip off, you mother flipper! <laughs> Uh, I'll come and flip you up the flip side to flip, 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 flip. I just flip it. <laughs> no, no, you have to, you have to swear. I stood up for my rights to swear because it's, it's an ancient, it's an ancient right, it's an English right, isn't it? All, everyone uses our swear words all over the world, don't they? They're the best swear words ever, aren't they? Our swear words, because they're all Saxon words. And my theory is that swearing was invented by King Harold at the Battle of Hastings. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when he had an arrow in his arm. <laughs> And he's walking around the battlefield going, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> right in the fucking eye. <laughs> Just my fucking luck. I don't believe it. You try and defend your fucking country. <laughs> you get a fucking arrow right in the fuck oh, bollock shit wankers, oh, fuck it. Could have fucking landed anywhere and I'm far, so I'm fucking sick of this, to tell you the truth, I've had a fucking enough. <laughs> I bet some nobleman went, well, there's no need for that language, sir. <laughs> what? I've got a fucking arrow! In my fucking eye! <laughs> Anyway, I'm the fucking king. <laughs> I'll say what I want. Come here, I'll stick it up your ass, mate. I said, Ooh. Didn't have any room for that on the Bayer uh, tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> Good, wouldn't it? Like, Ooh. <laughs> Lord Pomfret. Lord Pomfret with an arrow up his ass. Because <laughs> they were always in profile on those days, aren't they? <laughs> king Harold going. Would be like this, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh. Sort of Michael Barrymore thing, that, isn't it? He does that. He's always doing that, isn't he? What is that movement? I don't know. I think you should stop it, though. It's not good for you. Is it? It's like a reverse Heimlich, isn't it? That is it. <laughs> uh. <laughs> 
Because yeah. I, I was thinking, when do these people think it's all right to swear? When do they go, uh, yeah, no, no, that's a legitimate reason. You swear away now, mate. Yeah, go on, that's fine now. <laughs> now, you've got every right to swear in this situation. No. Oh, for example, it's all right to swear, for example, the first time you realise you're allergic to nuts. <laughs> You go, oh, fuck it all. <laughs> uh oh, oh. I feel a bit fucking weird, actually. I don't feel all right. Stop swearing. Oh, look at my fucking face. <laughs> I'm filling up the room. Look at the room. Full balls. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right then, isn't it? Or, for example, you know, you've been stranded on a desert island. Six months, no human contact. One morning, there's a bottle floating in the shore. You rush out, grab it, take the paper out, read it. It says, you have no messages. <laughs> Wankers. <laughs> or you're a noise upstairs. You go and investigate, and there's a bear in your loft. <laughs> there's a fucking bear up there. Or, you know, put them in things like fairy stories. I think it would... The, I think swearing would ruin fairy stories, wouldn't it? Like, the last line of The Princess and the Pea was, I can still feel that fucking pea. <laughs> yes, I'm very fucking sensitive, actually. See, my doctor's weird. My doctor's weird. He's strange. He doesn't, he doesn't swear. He does something far more strange. What he does is he mixes up sort of correct clinical medical language with a bit of slang. Oh, it's odd. I went to see him the other day, and I had this pain in my side. And he said, what you've done, Mr. Locke? He said, you've ruptured your lateral dorsal muscle. This has put a lot of pressure on the third vertebrae, which has trapped the sacral nerves around your arse. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel dirty. Can I come out? <laughs> if your doctor starts using words like bell end, leave. <laughs> And I don't like doctors anyway. I really don't like... A lot, lot of people have a lot of respect. I really don't like them. I don't like them. And fair enough, I do accept they do save your life. I'll give them that, yes. <laughs> but on the downside, they've got that look, haven't they? That, that sort of, I don't know, that smug look. They look at you going, I'm a doctor. What have you done with your life? <laughs> and now you're ill. <laughs> <laughs> And the other thing I don't like about them is they hurt you, don't they? Doctors hurt you. My hurt, mine hurt me the other day, really hurt me the other day. He said, I drink too much. I went, ha, ha. I have feelings. Because he asked me how much I had to drink, and I told him, you know, eventually. And he said, well, if you drink more than 21 units a week, you're in danger of becoming an alcoholic. And I worked that out. That's, that's 11 pints in a week. You'd drink that in a week, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? Would you get through that in a week? Yeah, yeah. Tuesday, they'd have that be finished. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, if we're all alcoholics, what do you call those blokes who sit on the street on like a throne of ring pulls, you know, sh shouting at pigeons and combing their hair with a shoe? <laughs> I mean, how many units are they on a week? 200, 300? But if I have ten pints by Sunday at a big portion of trifle, oh, I'm lumped in with them. <laughs> I think we need a new definition for this alcoholic thing. I think we need to really sort of pin it down a bit better. Some people would say, if you still get served in pubs, you're a light social drinker. Yeah, yeah he's got problems, they serve him. You know what I mean? That's good. Other people would say, if you leave the house with your jacket buttoned into your shirt like that. <laughs> You know, check yourself in the mirror before you go out. Yep, looking good. <laughs> and if you're socialising around war memorials, I think you've got a problem. You know? <laughs> Not good. It's a grey area. It's one of those grey areas in life. There's a lot of grey areas, aren't there? Like, you know, at what point does a cucumber become a dildo? <laughs> That's a mood thing, really, that, isn't it? Or when does a dropping become a turd? <laughs> dropping, 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 turd! Because you see David Attenborough, he's going around picking up droppings, and he's like, oh, there's been some caribou through here. You know? I don't know, he's gone Yorkshire as well. That's probably the only voice I've <laughs>
I'm not touching that. <laughs> no, good job, it's cameraman's. Oh. <laughs> Her name was Lola. She was a showgirl. Living in the air. He's back. Lots of loving everywhere. And the copa. <laughs> Just finishing having a little break. Um, <clears throat> actually, I was, I was talking earlier about difficult things in this job. Well, actually, one of the most difficult things in this job is, is, is memory. Everyone thinks you must have an amazing memory to remember all this stuff. How do you do it in an incredible memory? Almost like half the show is a memory feat. And of course, it would be if I did. Um, I've got a terrible memory. I, I forget stuff all the time, all my life. I'm always forgetting stuff. You know, it just goes out of my mind. And like, I'll give you an example. The other day I left the house, I was going to the swimming baths, and I was halfway there, I realised I'd forgotten my goggles. <laughs> What do you think? No, um, there's more to it than that. I was just, uh, I was just gonna leave you there. Go. So that proves I haven't got a very good memory. <laughs> no, no. So I went home. And I noticed the front door was slightly open. I thought that's odd. That's odd. And I heard this noise coming from upstairs. And I went upstairs and I saw something which chilled me to my very marrow. I saw that my wife was having sex with one of my oldest friends, someone I've known since I was nine years old. But the worst thing was, I couldn't remember his name. <laughs> Drives you mad, doesn't it? I'm thinking, oh, what's this? No, I know this. I know it. Oh, God. And I was having trouble concentrating. She was making all these noises I'd never heard before. <laughs> and of course, eventually, I did remember it. I did remember it. But the trouble was, I was so relieved to remember it. When I shouted it out, it sounded like I was really pleased to see him. <laughs> Dennis! <laughs> I think it had the wrong impression, really. <laughs> he thought I'd come to join in. <laughs> well, I say I remembered it. You know, she shouted out a couple of seconds before that. <laughs> Dennis! Dennis! Because <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, the weird thing about memory is you can have the worst memory in the world, but there's one thing in life you never, ever forget, and that's shame. Isn't it? You never, ever forget shame. Shame stalks you, hunts you down. You can be in perfectly good mood doing anything. For some reason, you suddenly remember something you did a few years ago. And it just, it just pours through your head. You suddenly just walk along in perfectly good mood. Suddenly you go, ah, <laughs> ah, oh, 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 oh. People, what's the matter with you? He just, just remembered that time in the uh, hotel with the badgers. <laughs> 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 I'll be, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. It's awful, isn't it? Just, just hunt stalks you down. No warning, nothing. I was had, had one the other day. I remember this time I put a note out for the milkman, and accidentally I put a kiss on it. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and you, you don't, you don't get any warning. You could be up a ladder, have one. Uh, uh, uh. Drop your binoculars. And that's, <laughs> that's one in the bank for later. And I had one recently, and it was one of those perfect days, beautiful day, opened the door, I was in a really good mood, opened the curtains, lovely sunny day, I noticed my neighbour had all her thongs on the washing line, you know. That always cheers me up. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the park, you know, the flowers were out, kids were playing, it was just delightful. And suddenly I remembered this job interview I'd been to years ago. Well, halfway through it, the job interviewer pointed out that my shirt buttoned up on the wrong side. So technically, I was wearing a blouse. <laughs> 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 but as it happened, I was walking past this dwarf. This dwarf was going past me. So I, went, so I was going. <laughs> <laughs> and for some reason, I felt the need to mention it. So I went. <laughs> I, said, I said, sorry, mate, I didn't mean you. <laughs> and he said, what are you on about? I said, when I was going. <laughs> It's nothing to do with you, was not it? And he said, why would I think that? And now that's become something I go, ah, ah, ah. But the trouble is, every time I see a dwarf, it triggers that memory. So I go, ah, ah. Sorry, mate, I didn't mean you. Oh, no, I've done it again. Ah, ah, ah. I'm trapped in a dwarf shame spiral. <laughs> you don't get gags like that every day, do you? 
No, no, it's been, I'm going to enjoy myself tonight. I've had a good time tonight. Because I've had a, you know, a few sort of little problems recently. A few things annoyed me. I was a bit annoyed, actually, because I've been on tour. I've been on tour, and I don't know if you've ever seen my poster. And I was in Norwich last night, and it was really annoying. Some bloke, right? Some, I assume it's a bloke. It must be a bloke. Has drawn a knob on one of my posters. <laughs> and I just think that, oh, oh, it's horrible. You know, he probably hasn't even seen the show. Just got a, drawn a knob. And what, what I think's weird is they don't just draw a knob. They always put a few details in, don't they? <laughs> In case you didn't know what it was. <laughs> yeah? They always have to put a bit of a helmet on it and a Jap's eye, some stuff coming out at the end. <laughs> you know, they've got time to draw some testicles, a bit of stubble, you know. <laughs> they never get the time for veins, fine vein work. You know? <laughs> I say bloke, it must be a bloke's done it. Obviously a bloke has done it. Women wouldn't do that, would they? Women wouldn't do that. They wouldn't. Women don't do things like that. And if they did, they'd draw their own genitals, wouldn't they? And they're not going to do that. It'd take hours. <laughs> oh, this is a difficult bit. <laughs> bit of cross hatching. <laughs> nah, too symmetrical. <laughs> Sorry, because always everyone's always talking. Particularly comedians are always talking about the difference between men and women. They say men are like this, women are like that, men are like that. And I think that's rubbish. I think the only difference between men and women is our genitals much easier to draw, <laughs> and that's given us the confidence to go out and build bridges and invent stuff. <laughs> it's not an airtight theory. I realise. Yes. <laughs> But I do find it very odd, you know. I used to go out with this girl, she, she used to say to me, she'd say to me, the thing that trouble you is you're just like a bloke. You're such a bloke. You're such, you're such like a bloke. And I thought, well, yeah, I thought that was the idea. <laughs> no, she said, you never let me know, like a bloke, you never let me know how you feel. Not whether I was hot, uncomfortable or hungry. I'm very good at that. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, open the window, bloody boiling in there. <sighs> Cup of tea, lovely, great idea. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> Just put cushion, put under my foot. Oh, that's perfect. Just the right level now. Lovely. No, no. What she said, she said, you never let me know. You never tell me how much you love me. And I thought about this. I thought about this. I thought, what's the best way to let someone know how much you love them? You know, is it with a jewellery or flowers or a meal? And of course it's not, is it? The best way to let someone know how much you love them is with a pie chart. <laughs> Because that way, they know exactly how much. <laughs> Emotional precision, that's what they want. And do it properly like it's an office. Invite them in and say, would you like to come in? Can I get you anything? Tea, coffee, anything at all? Okay, fair enough. Let's have a look at this year's chart then. <laughs> I'm very excited. I'll just flip it over here. Just flip the chart. Oh, talk you through the chart. This blue segment here, this blue segment here, that's my family. Stays pretty constant. Yeah. You'd have to be a pretty foxy lady to eat into that bit, I tell you. You might have to do something you might be a bit ashamed of. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no pressure on it. No pressure. And this yellow bit here, this yellow bit, that's ice cream. Mmm, I love ice cream. Mmm, I love it, love it, love it, love it. But the exciting news is, this big red bit here, that's you, yes. Which is a 20% increase on last year. <laughs> well done. <laughs> and if we look at next year's projected figures, <laughs> once you've had the implants done, <laughs> you'll be taking up pretty much the whole chart. <laughs> Perfect solution to all those relationship doubts and fears, isn't it? And it's great because, you, you, you know, you can use it to chuck someone as well. And it's great because you don't have to say anything. You just show them the chart and go... <laughs> <laughs> what happened there then? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, that's amazing. God, that's serious drop off, isn't it? You used to be all over that like a rash, weren't you? Yeah, it's gone down. I can check with the guys in graphics, but uh, they're a good team here. I don't think they make any mistakes. Uh, yeah, it's, all, it's all yellow now. Ice cream. Got mad for it. <laughs> I was all blurred for that over here. It was my fat tug. <laughs> yeah. oh, 
No, no, it's good. I'm enjoying tonight. I had a good time tonight. Because, like I said, I had a few problems recently. Like, I've got this old bloke living next door to me. Now, this old fellow lives next door to me, and he's always moaning. I play a bit of music. He starts banging on the walls. I think sod it. I'm not turning up for anybody. He can buy his own stereo. <laughs> And he's always saying to me, I fought in the Second World War for you, Sonny. I fought in the Second World War. And I've tried to explain to him, he had got captured by the Germans during the Second World War, and they said, which side are you on? You wouldn't have said Sean Locke. So technically, you did not fight for me as an individual. No, 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 no. You fought for a state which I was born into, purely by accident, plucked from the ether, chemical chance. There is no control or rights over my destiny whatsoever. <laughs> and <laughs> he has a very similar response to you guys. He goes, huh? <laughs> Stay away from our cats. <laughs> But when he really pisses me off, what I do is I go down the shops, get 30 bottles of milk, leave them outside his front door, wait for the police and social services to <laughs> smash his door down. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great fun. He's in the kitchen chasing a fish finger around the frying pan. <laughs> they come crashing through the door. Why aren't you dead? Leave me alone. <laughs> then they arrest him for wasting police time. <laughs> And when they take him away, what I do, I nip into his flat and kill his budgie with a teaspoon. <laughs> Takes ages. <laughs> oh. boom, boom, boom. Change your hands. Let's Let. <laughs> a little bit of frostiness in parts of the room there. <laughs> please don't. I mean, if anyone is troubled or disturbed by that, please don't be. No, there's nothing. I don't. I'm not. Not like that at all, you know. And if you, you are troubled by it, what you're being troubled by is me killing an imaginary buttery girl with an imaginary teaspoon. <laughs> so there's nothing to worry about. <laughs> He's fine. Doesn't matter what I kill him with. <laughs> Bazooka. <laughs> Couple of seconds later, back on his perch. <laughs> Happy as that. I could get a razor blade, right? <laughs> Slit his eyelids open. <laughs> Put ants' eggs in there, sew them back up, and wait till they hatch out and eat through his brain. <laughs> and then he just falls over like an empty Kinder egg. <laughs> Within moments, he's pecking his mirror with his beak. Hello, who's a brick boy? Who's a brick boy? Happy as Larry, you know? I could put him in a vice, right? <laughs> just tighten it. So it's not causing him any discomfort, just cradling him. You know? And then get a big box of trill. <laughs> just feed the greedy little bastard. <laughs> And eventually something's going to give. <laughs> Ain't going to be the vice. Bit like chicken. Um, or I could stick him up my arse. Feet first, I'm not a maniac. <laughs> And just slowly reverse towards a powerful stone grinding wheel. <laughs> Imagine a grinding wheel going, and I just back onto it like that. Just take off a layer of skin, you know. Little feathers are coming down. Quite beautiful. I think you got the point, really, there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no, the, re, uh, the reason I said that, the, reason I, the point I was trying to make there was that if anything I said in my show at any point has disturbed or troubled anyway, please don't be bothered or troubled by it because uh, none of it's true. It's all made up. I haven't got a catalogue bride. You know? I'm not even married. I'm gay. <laughs> I'm not, but it doesn't matter, does it? <laughs> I've never been to America. Never been, never been, you know. I'm sure if I went, I'd love it. You know, they've got big thermometers. <laughs> of course they've got a word for tangerine in Senegal. Of 
What's a head? It's probably tangerine. Mm. Mm. My doctor doesn't think I drink enough. <laughs> he said, I cannot recommend too highly the medicinal and psychological benefits of getting arsehole. <laughs> Nobody drew a knob on my poster. It was a canoe. It's just that it was stuck between two boulders. It came down the rapids and it got bashed at the end and there was a leak on one end. And there were some twigs under the boulders and someone had written, it was called, it was called Wanker, the canoe. And... No, not a word, not a word, of the tr- not a word of it's true. But before I go, actually, I will tell you one true story, one genuine thing that did happen to me. And the reason I tell you that is because sometimes in life you have experiences and they really do change the way you see yourself and the world. And I had a near-death experience about a year ago. I was flying across the Atlantic to Canada. And as we were flying, there was a bit, we had a bit of engine trouble and people started getting a bit panicky, a bit nervy. And then the other engine failed and basically the plane was plummeting towards the ocean. And people, it was sheer blind panic. People were screaming and crying. It was pandemonium. But for some reason, I don't know why, I wasn't bothered at all. I was very calm, very composed. In fact, I was a bit pissed off. I turned the film off. <laughs> and there's this little old lady next to me going to visit her son in uh, Montreal. And, um, and she was just oh, terrible. Tears running down her face. She was in a dreadful state, arms waving around. I thought, I'd better try and do something. So I managed to catch her hand, her frail hand, and I brought it down onto the armrest. And I turned to her and I said... Fuck you, old lady! We're gonna die! <laughs> and I think I let myself down a bit there, you know? <laughs> Didn't know I had that in me. Really much. Right. Fortunately, the pilot managed to restart the engines. She asked to be moved. <laughs> Just trying to get upgraded, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone got a complimentary drink, except moi. <laughs> and I was leaving the plane, the cabin crew just giving me a filthy look. So they were really just shaking their heads, going, I can't believe you did that. I really can't believe you did that. That was outrageous. And I said, Why? They said, Well, you've got a Wallace and Gromit tie on. <laughs> Thanks very much. You've been a fantastic crowd, and good night. Thank you.